Um, good, fantastic. And I think it's probably time to get re uh, ready for the next talk. Um, uh, so next up will be uh, Ilka Lindstedt from the University of Helsinki on the ethical religious vocabulary on the eve of Islam in light of inscriptions from Nir Tabuk uh, and Arabic poetry. Um, and we can see your presentation. And are you okay to start a couple of minutes early? Or okay, uh, yeah, okay yeah, to skip? I don't want to mess up the schedule. But again, <laughs> thank you. Off you go. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, can you Can you see my screen? Good. Uh, so I'm still recovering from COVID, so my brain is still a bit slow. So if I'm not making perfect sense, that might be uh, one of the reasons at least. So we will look here in this presentation at a few 6th century common era Arabic texts, both on stone and in verse, and they are all monotheistic. So uh, it speaks to the uh, sort of nowadays more or less consensus that there was a rich monotheistic tradition and a lot of people had already adopted monotheistic beliefs and identities, but also I will look at specifically eth ethical discourses which these uh, texts attest to, and which we can also witness in the North Arabian desert. So that's the linkage to desert cults, I suppose. Uh, so um, I will introduce five Wasiya texts. These are sort of ethical testaments uh, that date from the eve of Islam. Wasiya means, can also mean in concrete terms, uh, a testament. But here we are talking about ethical sort of uh, uh, message that is that is conveyed to, to posteriority by, by uh, uh, an older person. <clears throat> so two inscriptions, they are undated, but I would argue they are from the 6th century. Common era, perhaps from the early 6th century. Common era, these are from near the book. And uh, you can see the sigla there. And then three poetical snippets that are attributed to uh, pre-Islamic poets or more specifically Arabic poets that are contemporary to Muhammad. And of course, we can discuss the authenticity of these uh, attributions, but at least there's a, we can see that there's a certain overlap between the, with the inscriptions and, and, and the poems. And uh, if we uh, can um, trust the, these attributions, then perhaps the the poets poems date from the late 6th century or early early 7th century uh and we will discuss sort of religious currents and notions especially ethical uh terms uh and then also if we have time I will uh, discuss some terms namely uh, bir and taqwa in in the quran as well so uh so the my background the background of this talk is sort of my uh, the research that I was doing for my book, where I, I uh, map the sort of religious currents and, and groups in, in late antique Arabia, and I was reading also through Arabic poetry, uh, for instance, the Divan of, of the famous Al Asha. And uh, I included some of that material to, to my book, but but not the the poems that I'm discussing here. And in that in that divan, while well, while I was reading through the divan, I encountered this poem poem. Uh, which is titled by the modern editor Usi Kumu Bithalath. So I enjoin on you three things. And there I noticed a couple of interesting uh, uh, phrases or words that appear in this Wasiya inscription. And I will get back to this with, with the translation. So don't worry if you don't get the, the uh, meaning yet. But uh, there was a mention of a daif, so the guest that the guest should be treated right and then qadilul qalm so that the uh, 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 opponents enemies should be fought qalm meaning people in general but in, in battle conquest is always the the enemy and while i saw that poem uh it immediately uh rang some bells but i couldn't quite uh, identify uh, immediately where i've seen this and uh it took sometime me to realize that I've, I've seen a uh, very similar text in in, uh, in, uh, in inscriptions that have, have been recently found. So uh, Basia inscriptions found in 2017 by the Saudi Arabian uh, amateur team Farak al uh, They found these texts in Haratu Raha, Abbasal Desert, it's the south of Tabuk, you can see it marked there on the map. Uh, so we're in the desert region, basically, uh, but close to more 
urban and settled environment, of course. Uh, uh, and these inscriptions were published in their website in 2017 with, with a reading, with a preliminary reading by them. And, and Laila Nema will publish them in a more scholarly format in her uh, website that will include uh, late Napatean materials and early pre-Islamic uh, developing Arabic inscriptions. And, and so the sigla, as you can see here, stand for Harrat Araha, uh, developing Arabic 4 and 5b. There are some other inscriptions as well published in, this, uh, in, the, in the website, which but I won't go there. So these are the most important ones. So uh, first, number four, uh, which was the inscription that came to my mind while I was reading Elijah's poem or, or the poem attributed to him at least. Um, so uh, this is the uh, inscription. I suppose I could just read it in Arabic and then note a few things in, in translation and, and just uh, note my interpretation. I, I don't know if my interpretation agrees completely what, with what Lila will uh, uh, put forward in, in, the, in the website, but and it doesn't completely align with what the Farah has, has uh, suggested. But uh, any anyway, so Adiyu uh, bar fulan libani aus silm antum fala ausa kum bipir billa al kuwa bar rom al khail wa qidal al qaum wa tuqa rahim wa karamat taif. So here a couple of interesting. Uh, features in, in the inscription, uh, similarities with Asha, uh, his poem, we have Ataif, uh, the Wasiya text here indicates that uh, to the to the uh, uh, to the audience or the readers of the inscription that that they should uh, take care of the guest. That's at the end. In the beginning, of course, God was mentioned. Righteous conduct, bir, toward God, bibir billah. It's a bit weird construction because it's in in the indefinite. We see in one poem a similar construction, but it's in the definite, which is what one might expect, actually. And then we have a qital uh, al which we saw in Alasha's poem. Uh, other important words, tuqa, appearing here, uh, which is a central ethical concept uh, which we encounter in the poems as well, which I will show in a in a bit. And then we have some more worldly things mentioned here as well, but, uh, acquiring power, kuwa, and spears and, and horses as well. Uh, the Farah Kassara read Naka instead of Tuka. I'm suggesting Tuka, however, uh, in the po poetry, in the ethical poems, Arabic poems, uh, the word tuka is very common. It is uh, a synonym of taqwa, a word that uh, appears in the Quran quite a few times. Tuka does not appear. And also, uh, I'm basing the claim that one should, or at least could read tuka here, tuka rahim. Uh, I'm basing the claim on, on verse 4 1, which is a long verse in Quran, but it uh, includes also the portion wattaqu allah walarham and then there are a few words in in the middle as well so revere revere god and the relatives arham being a plural of of rahim with a, with the very same it's the same meaning basically and some exegetes indeed like fakhradin razi uh later of course 12th century exegete uh, mentions that in this verse uh taqwa larham is being addressed as a, as a topic, so which is a quite clear, nice, uh, almost uh, similar phrase to tuka tuka rahim. So of course the spelling uh, make might make one pause, uh, but so in, in the inscription we have uh, alif uh, mamduda and uh, not alif maksuras as you have in classical Arabic, but of course in early Quranic manuscript there's quite a bit of variation there and and of course there's all, the whole debate if we are talking about different uh, vowels actually here but I'm not going to go there uh, the other text is 5b 
which is here. First, you have 5A on the same rock, rock which is only a name, Kabu Bar Al Fadl. Uh, but 5B reads, The Qaisu Bar Ahmad, Kataba, Libani Al Khasraj, Silm Antum, Fala, Ausakum, Bibir, Al Ilah, Wal Bal, Wal Kowa. So some similarities, some differences here. Um, once again, Bir is being mentioned here and a similar Wasiya text as the, the previous one. Then we have also the power and al bal, a similar concept to, uh, it's always related to relatives in, in classical Arabic texts, at least this, this word, al bal. Uh, what is interesting here that the word for God is alilah, which we know is uh, was in particular used by Christians, Arabic-speaking Christians in the sixth century, uh, not exclusively so, but but in particular by them. Uh, and then, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. It would seem that there's a cross here, and both the cross and alilah, the word alilah, and some, something else as well, and and a drawing here, probably as somebody riding a camel if I see it correctly. Uh, these have been effaced by, by a later person. So uh, perhaps uh, a later Muslim who did not like that there was a cross there wanted to efface it a little bit. And then also a specifically Christian uh, way of re referring to God Alila was also effaced by the same person. That, that's at least what I would see, and I haven't been able to, of course, see the the stone in 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 situ. So this is only based on 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 this photograph. All right. So it might be written by a Christian, somebody uh, who identified as Christian. Uh, what about the dating? Of course, these are undated inscriptions, but there are some features that make me think, and and uh, I know that Lila uh, agrees that these are pre-Islamic inscriptions, not the Islamic era. So there's all around archaic paleography, I would say. And then there's some uh, features that that uh, that uh, do not appear in the Islamic times anymore. For instance, Kataba in, in this text, there seems to be a differentiation between Ta and Ba, which is, of course, something that we find in Nabataean Arabic and some uh, old Arabic, meaning pre-Islamic Arabic inscriptions. But don't this dif difference between Ta and Ba does not, appear anymore in the uh, Islamic times. Uh, we have wabayshin in names, which is rare, though it occurs in in uh, in Islamic times. It's quite common in, in pre-Islamic era, uh, whether in Nabataean inscriptions or Old Arabic. Then we have bar used uh, for s instead of pin, and billa uh, written in this very interesting way, uh, balam ha, which of course you don't find at all in Islamic times. <laughs> and then there are some uh, peculiar phrases, uh, fala, which seems to be similar to uh, the classical Arabic Allah, just indeed. Uh, and then uh, silm antum, which you find in some letters that are uh, ascribed to the prophet Muhammad. And then in uh, perhaps in one Quranic uh, passage when the excuse me uh when abraham in one of the abraham narratives uh, receives guests and uh, uh i think it's abraham that uh tells the the uh, uh the guests who are actually angels uh silm qawmun munkarun uh this is usually uh, vocalized as a salam and this is how Cairo edition reads it but uh but the manuscripts never had the medial alif and, and uh, some reading tradition uh, understand it, uh, read it as silm and then uh, uh, Tabari in cites uh, early authorities saying that this actually means antum silm, which is the, almost the same as we have in the, uh, in the inscriptions. So, um, all right. Uh, the, the poems, uh, three poems, and then um, if I have time, I'll also mention a few things about the Quran. So uh, this poem you already saw in the poem, Al-Asha is reporting 
supposedly at least from his father who uh who uh was making this sort of wasiya ethical testament to to Alasha and, and the uh, brothers and perhaps sisters as well where uh his father enjoined on them three things they are taking care of the guest and then jar neighbor ally protected person uh, this doesn't appear in the in the inscriptions, but it does appear in some other poems, of course. And then we have a Qadil al Qaum, which so this is basically the uh, the poem that <clears throat> that I mentioned in the in the beginning. And uh, once again, the same uh, verb Awsa is being used for for communicating this sort of ethical testament, ethical message, ethical wisdom. One might say that an older person gives to to uh, his descents, uh, his off offspring. Um, in the Mufaddalayat, uh, a famous famous collection of of pre-Islamic and and some I suppose early Islamic poems as well. Uh, there's a poem. Uh, attributed to one Abda ibn al uh poet from the, the tribe of Tamim, and we don't know much about this Persian, if if anything. Uh, <clears throat> the editor Lyal uh, suggests that Abda was a contemporary of, of the prophet. Uh, in any case, the, in the text we have uh, quite similar things happening as in the inscriptions and, and Elisha's uh, poem. It begins by noting that it's actually Abda himself who has grown old and my sight fails me. And, and then he's sort of imparting, conveying this wisdom to uh, to his children. So it's a little bit different situation from Elisha's poem. But similar things are being communicated. Uh, uh, bitukal ilahi, though I enjoin on you reverence for God, and, and righteous conduct toward your father, so uh, or relatives, one might perhaps say, say more more generally is is here of course uh, <clears throat> somewhat similar to what we had in, in in the inscription, which at least in uh, my reading says uh, uh, rahim, right? And then uh, so. Usually, the authenticity of the poems in Mufaddaliyat is uh, uh, is trusted to a degree, at least. Uh, perhaps more problematic case is the next poem by or attributed to Abu Qais ibn Laslat, a uh, Medinan poet, poet, and and person basically. <laughs> uh, uh, no divan or collection of poems. By him survives as manuscript from the medieval era, so this is a, a collection by by the modern edit, editor Hassan Muhammad Bajuda from various sources. Uh, you can find this uh, this uh, poems in uh, Ibn Hisham's Asirat al Nabawi. This specific poem comes from Ibn Hisham. Uh, so th there's a, the question of authenticity is is more problematic in this case. But um, what is interesting, we once again find uh the monotheist belief uh we have the word bir and toka and then we have the phrase uh well in the in the in the inscription we had in the indefinite bibir billa which is a kind of weird and non-grammatical uh construction i would say but but in any case uh here is more uh more grammatical one might say uh, but yeah, once again, uh, this key concept, concepts bir, bir and tuqa appears uh, in, in this poem. Uh, they are, so they are used both in the context of, of God and relatives, even though uh, uh, the word tuqa does not appear in the in the poems uh, in the context of the relatives, uh, but we saw in Quran four one and that it, the the word ittaka, uh, the verb ittaka seems to uh, uh, function in that context. Then we have some other ethical notions uh, mentioned in in the poems and the uh, the inscriptions: bravery in battle, acquiring mat material things, etc., etc. 
So, of course, not only uh, God and, and relatives mentioned, but other ethical things as well. So um, what does this mean for the Quran? Uh, perhaps not a lot, but at least it attests to uh, uh, at least emerging or existing rich uh, discourse, ethical discourse that was uh, happening in, in Western Arabia at the time. Uh, and of course, we have the verb Ausa and Wassa being used in, in the Quran as well, uh, in addition to other ethical passages in the Quran, which do not feature this specific verb, but uh, just discuss ethical things more, more generally. Um, so interestingly, the word Tuqa never appears in the Quran, but it's synonym Taqwa quite often does. And Nikolai has treated uh, the <clears throat> the word taqwa and, and the words from the root wow qaf yaf uh, quite extensively and and he takes uh, issue with the rendering god consciousness which we uh, encounter in in sort of modern theology uh, and modern exegesis of the quran by fatul rahman jerusalem channel rose for instance um and this seems to and I agree with Nikolai that this appears far-fetched, but there seems to be at least if we, if you agree with my reading that that, that the uh, Harat Raha inscription four mentions Tukar Rahim, if you agree that the word Tukar appears there, uh, it seems to point toward the fact that there was some sort of semantic expansion to uh, more general open-ended reverence also uh, in the in secular context and the word becomes more or less synonymous with with beer and also related to this is, is uh, important to acknowledge that the word beer was not only limited to secular context in in the pre-islamic era so the 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 uh, poems and the uh, the inscriptions quite clearly evidence this. Uh, this is something that one reads quite often in secondary literature, such as in Omar Farouk's uh, book, Das Bild des Frü Islam, in the in the Arabic and uh, which is of course quite dated now, but in other works as well. I've, I've read that beer does not function uh, in in religious context in in pre-Islamic times and it's a sort of like Quranic novelty that it does and of course the Quranic ethics differ uh, from uh, the Wasiya inscriptions and the Wasiya poems uh, in them uh, sort of trying to acquire worldly things worldly good these worldly good things was something that one should try to do the Quranic ethics uh, sort of uh, Article is a more temperate uh, approach to this, and and says that this is not something that one is, is the main aim of a, of a human being. <clears throat> but with that, I think my time is up, and I will finish here.